Mr. Scott Eccles. Oh, ah, Mr. Garcia. I'm sorry, I did not recognize you at once. No. Please allow me to carry uh, your case. I'm sorry, still love you. Thank you very much. I'm sorry the weather has been unkind for your visit. Ah, well, unkind for you, perhaps, but uh, we British, you know, we're hardy souls. <laughs> ah. The county of Surrey is particularly interesting, as far as uh, the maps are concerned. Showing you my entire I've collection got the, but, 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 of, uh, but, 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 of sunny maps. I mean, there's Maul and, and Ogleby. I've got one or two here I can show you. He used Vamos. to draw. Okay. One or two. Eso va a ser todo por ahora. Puedes enseñar el caballo y guardar el coche. Ah, oh, this is your house, is it? Yes, please. You're yeah. welcome. It's very nice. Very nice. I suppose, Watson, we must look upon you as a man of letters. How do you define the word grotesque? Grotesque? Oh, strange. Remarkable? No, 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 surely. There's more to it than that. Some underlying suggestion of the tragic, the terrible. If you cast your mind back to those narratives with which you've inflicted a long, suffering public, you will see how often the word grotesque has deepened into the criminal. <laughs> Suppose that. Fair, the red-headed men was grotesque enough at the outset. Huh. Ah! <coughs> All that most grotesque affair. The five orange pips. Yes, which led straight to a murderous conspiracy. Another word. Puts me on the alert. Oh, how did you do? Hmm. I've just had the most incredible and grotesque experience. May I consult you, Scott Eccles? Post office, Charing Cross. Oh. A man or a woman? A oh, man! No woman would send a reply paid telegram, she would have come. Have you seen him? Oh, my dear Watson. You know how bored I've been since we locked up Colonel Carruthers. Life is common. The newspapers are sterile. Audacity and man seem to have passed forever from the criminal world. Of course I'll see him. But as I'm very much mistaken, this is our client. Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Mrs. Hudson. Well, are you, Mr. Holmes? Certainly. Yes, Mr. Holmes, I have just had a most singular and unpleasant experience. Really? Yes, never in my life have I been subject to, uh, uh, to such embarrassment and been placed in such a position. <laughs> Please sit down, Mrs. Scott Eggles, my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. Now, in the first place, may I ask why you have come to me at all? Oh, oh, well, sir, uh, it didn't appear to be a matter which concerned the police. Yet, when you've heard the facts, you must admit I, I couldn't just leave it where it was. Now, private detectives, they are a class with whom I'm absolutely... I have no sympathy. Sit! <laughs> Mr. Scott Eggles. Well, nonetheless... Uh, having heard your name, right, I decided... Now, the second place, why did you not come to me at once? What do you mean? Well, it is now a quarter past two. A telegram is dispatched about one. No one could glance at your toilet in a tower without seeing that your disturbance dates from the moment of your waking. What? Uh, but you're right, Mr. Holmes. Yes. I never gave a thought to my toilet. I... I was only too glad to get out of such a house. Oh, oh, no. No, no thank you. No. you. You see, I've been running round making inquiries before I, I came here. See, I, I called at the house agents, you know. Oh, yes, yes. And they said, they said that, that Mr. Garcia's rent 
was paid up all right, and that <laughs> everything was in order in Wisteria Lodge. Oh, no, come, 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 sir. <laughs> you know, you're like my friend Watson, who has the bad habit of telling his stories wrong end foremost. Now, please, please, arrange your thoughts and let me know in their due sequence exactly what those events are which have sent you out unbrushed and unkempt with your dress boots and waistcoat buttoned awry in search of advice and assistance. Well, uh, I'm a bachelor and, uh, and being of a, a sociable turn, uh, I cultivate a large number of friends. At the table of one of them recently, I met a young fellow named Garcia, a pleasant chap of Spanish descent, connected in some way with the embassy. We discovered a common interest in cartography. Or so I thought. That's the study of old maps. The plan was to retrace Surrey as Thomas Moole engraved it some 50 years ago. Well, as soon as I arrived yesterday evening, I knew something was wrong. The atmosphere of the place, the house was tumbled down, and depressing. Garcia had told me he had a wonderful cook, a half-breed he picked up on his travels. But the dinner, well, it was so ill-prepared and served with such bad grace that it was barely edible. I, I can assure you that there were many times in the course of the evening I wish I could have invented some excuse to leave. What did you say? Well, the roots, it's fascinating. Oh. John Ogleby. Across the heathland. Ah, no, it wasn't, it wasn't just the heathland. It was all over the county. I say, are you feeling all right? Uh, yes, uh, sorry. Luis, Luis, some more wine for our guest. Yeah. Oh, ¿Qué pasa? Cálmate. ¿Qué te pasa? Escucha. Mira, ¿qué te pasa? Cálmate, cálmate. Sí, está llamando la atención. Entonces, espera, ahí viene algo, ya. Anda la puerta. Are we expecting company? I'd like a drink of that, if it's possible. And he made no remark as to the contents of the note? None. But from that moment, he gave up all pretense of conversation. He just sat there, smoking these endless cigarettes. About 11, I was glad to get to bed. <laughs> Two hours later, he looked in at my door. Uh, did you ring? Did I ring? Ah, oh, please, don't wake up. It's nearly one o'clock. Please go back to sleep. Good night. And now I come to the amazing part of my tale. When I woke, it was broad daylight, nearly nine. I had particularly asked to be called at eight, so I was very much astonished at this forgetfulness. I say, is anybody here? I'd like some hot water. I, I rang for the servant. There was no response. Somebody? I say, is there a servant available? I went from room to room. All were deserted. Even my host's room. The bed had never been slept in. Foreign host, foreign footman, foreign cook, all vanished in the night. Your experience is, so far as I know, perfectly unique. Now, what else can you tell me? Well, uh, I was furious. I, 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 I packed my bags and I, I banged the front door behind me and I set out for Isha. I, and then I, I, I called at Allen Brothers, the uh, land agents, and found it was from them that the villa had been rented. Rented? Well, you see, I, I couldn't believe that they'd gone simply to make a, 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 a fool of me. I thought, you know, it, it must be the rent. But 
I was wrong. See, the uh, agent thanked me for my warning, but said that the rent had been paid in advance. Mm. By the Spanish Embassy, I imagine. I called at the Spanish Embassy. The man is unknown to them. They also asked my friend, who introduced us, and he seemed to know less about Garcia than I did. Ah, this us. Wisteria Lodge. I wonder if it still as you left it. What's troubling you, Watson? Hmm? Well, I fear some mundane explanation for events may await us upon our arrival. It's possible we can thank our lucky fate, which has rescued us for a few hours from the insufferable fatigues of idleness. Oh. This uh, gentleman recommends the bull in the village. That's if we're to stay overnight. I uh, asked him if he knew Garcia or his servants. Did he? No. Mm, nothing unusual about the outside. Let's see what the interior holds for us. I don't suppose we can be charged with housebreaking, can we? What earth could leave such a mess? Yes, indeed. Mr. Holmes, welcome to Wisteria Lodge, Mr. Holmes. Inspector Baines of the Surrey Constabulary. <laughs> this is uh, Constable Downing. <laughs> and you are Mr. John Scott Eccles of Popham House Lee. I am. Oh, Mr. Scott Eccles, we've been following you about all the morning. You traced him through his telegram, I presume. Exactly, Mr. Holmes. We picked up the scent at Charing Cross Post Office. But what do you want? Uh, I mean, why do you follow me? Oh, we wish a statement, Mr. Scott Eccles, as to the events which led up to the death of Mr. Aloysius Garcia of Wisteria Lodge, near Isha. Dead, did you say? Oh, yes, he is dead, yes. Uh, but how? An accident? Uh, murder, sir. If ever there was one on earth. No. Oh. oh, God, this... This is awful. And you don't mean that I'm suspected? Well, sir, your note was found on the dead man's body. And from it we learned that you had planned to stay here in this house last night. Uh, so I did. Oh, you did, did you? I... Uh, wait. Baines, I mean, surely all you need is a simple statement. Yes, Mr. Holmes, but it is my duty to warn Mr. Scott Eccles that it may be used against him. Hmm. Ah, this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson, Inspector Baines. Yes, of course. Doctor, Sorry. your detention. Oh, Mr. Scott Eccles, you look as if you could do with a drink. Well, I uh, yes. found some brandy in the library. If you call me, I'll show you where it is. I don't know. Oh, thank you. El perro está manjando. Tu vestido blanco. No me importa. No me importa. Assure you, Inspector, that you know every word I've said. It is the truth. I'm bound to say, Mr. Scott Eccles, that uh, 
Everything you've said does agree with the facts as they've come to our notice. For example, the note that arrived during dinner. <laughs> Mrs. Scott Eggles, what became of the note? Well, Garcia rolled it up and, and, and threw it in the fire. What do you say to that, Baines? It was a dog great, Mr. Holmes. He uh, overpitched it. <laughs> I uh, found this unburnt at the back. You must have made a very careful examination of the house to find a single pellet of paper. Oh, I did, Mr. Holmes, I did. <laughs> it's my way. <laughs> the note's written on ordinary uh, cream-laid paper with a watermark. It's a quarter sheet. The paper's cut off in two snips with the short-bladed scissors. It's been uh, folded twice and sealed with scarlet wax. It's addressed to Mr. Garcia, Wisteria Lodge. And it says, <clears throat> Our own colours, green and white. Green open, white shut. Main stairs, first corridor, seventh right. Green bays, God speed. D. <laughs> It's in a woman's writing, done with a very sharp-pointed pen. But the address is either done with a different pen or by someone else, <laughs> because it's thicker and bolder, as you may see, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> it's a remarkable note. I really must congratulate you on your attention to detail. There are a few trifling points which might perhaps be added. The seal is a sleeve link. What else is it such a shave? The scissors were bent, nail scissors. Short as the two snips are, you can distinctly see the slight curve in each. Oh, <laughs> I thought I'd squeezed it dry, Mr. Holmes. But I see there was some still left over after all. <laughs> I'm bound to say that I make nothing of the note, except that uh, something's on hand and woman, as usual, is at the bottom of it. <laughs> oh. Well, I, I, I'm very glad you found the note, Inspector, because it corroborates my story. But, you know, I... I, I I do beg to point out that I, I haven't yet heard what has happened to Mr. Garcia or, or what has become of his household. As for Mr. Garcia, well, that's easily answered. He, is, uh, he was found dead on Oxshott Common this morning. His head had been beaten to a pulp by a sandbag or some such object which uh, crushed rather than wounded. Apparently, he'd been first struck down from behind, but his assailant went on beating him long after he was dead. It was a very furious assault. Ah, I mean, this activity that we saw as we approached the house, were there any footsteps or clues as to the criminal? None, as yet. <laughs> Had Garcia been robbed? No, no sign of robbery, no. Well, our tenants seem to have left little or nothing behind them. Apart from the clothes, uh, some pipes, a few novels, two of them in Spanish. One of them is missing. Mm. Yeah, we might assume the G stands for Garcia. Family heirloom, perhaps. 
The other was not on the body, nor has it been found in the vicinity, though my men are still looking. Do you wish to look around the house? A brief look. My room. Could have been the devil for all I know. Staring eyes at the window. Negroid features, mulatto-like. He's got away across the fields. Maybe just as well. I don't think I could have laid hands on him. Ah, oh, but it is. If he is all the same scale as his foot, then he is certainly a giant. Well, whoever he was, whatever he wanted, he's gone for the present. <laughs> and we have more important things to attend to. And you, sir, shall come to the station with me. Yes, sir. And let me have a written statement. Yes, certainly. I'll come at once. I have it a minor collaborating with you, Inspector. Oh, highly honoured, Mr. Holmes. Oh, highly honoured. Inspector, is there any clue as to the exact hour of the man's death? One o'clock. Oh. It rained about that time, and the death certainly occurred before the rain. No, no, no! That, 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 that is perfectly impossible, Mr. Baines. No, no, he, his voice is very unmistakable. I, I could swear to it that it was he who addressed me in my room at that very hour. Well, he spoke to me in, you know, that funny accent of his. He said, he's uh, nearly one o'clock. Remarkable, but one must not confuse the unlikely with the impossible. Ha! <laughs> what does he mean with that? Certainly some strange people occupied that house, Mr. Holmes. One of them is dead. Did some of his companions follow him and murder him? If so, we should have them. For every port is watched. But my views are different, Mr. Holmes. Yes, sir. My views are very different. You have a theory. And I'll work it myself, Mr. Holmes. Your name is already made. I get to make mine. And I should like to be able to say afterwards that I solved it without your help. Then do you follow your path and I will follow mine. Goodbye, Mr. Scott Eggles. Goodbye, Mr. Holmes. Scott Eggles. Well, let us consider this note. Is there a woman involved, a jealous husband? Godspeed. Godspeed, Dean. Now, that must be our guide. The man was a Spaniard. I suggest that the D stands for Dolores. It's a common female name in Spain. A Spaniard would write to a Spaniard in Spanish, Watson.
stones. Look what I found in a gorse bush. <laughs> Excellent. You are trespassing. I'm terrible, sorry. I seem to have lost my direction. Is it your custom to wander? Ah, Dr. Out? Rakefield, my friend and fellow cartographer. Uh, yes, indeed. You know, we were so engrossed, inclined to chase the bridle path to um, the now vanished hamlet of Ogdor, St. Mary, oh, awesome. that uh, we mislaid each other. And since you were late for Mr. Henderson, I thought, I'm so glad you found your way here. Well, I, I very much regret that. that Mr. Henderson is too busy to see you today. No, Lucas. I will see you. It is to inquire into the history of High Gable, which we believe has an intriguing and bloodthirsty past. I mean, since the days of the English Civil Wars. I would have no knowledge of that. I'm only a recent invader. Ah. <laughs> but there are local records in the library. There are no records of any past violence in this house. I see. Then I will detain you no more. Good day. I thought you were in London. For the morning only. But with your usual reluctance to confide your thoughts to me, I exercise my own mind in the matter. You'd circle two names on your list, Henderson and High Gable. Well, the others are prosaic, respectable people, far aloof from romance. But this man, Henderson, uh, he's a very singular creation. Yes, indeed. As you may have noticed, no tea for me, the house is double-winged, one side of the servants, the other side of the family. There is one single connecting door for the Henderson family meals. Oh. You sure you couldn't observe all that the short time we were there, Holmes? Ah, oh, there are no better instruments for gossip than discharged servants. And I was lucky enough to find one who had been sacked by his imperious master, Henderson, in a fit of violent temper. Now, the Henderson girls whom you encountered have a governess, a Miss Burnett, an Englishwoman. Here is a very singular fact. She has not been seen since the night of the murder. 
She has utterly vanished. I've seen her. Of course. I've seen her, and she is alive. I saw her at the window at High Gable. My God, a prisoner. She slipped my mind. The moment those awful gorgons descended upon me. She is alive. I've seen her. That's the man I saw and chased. Baines has arrested the wrong man. Ah, what's the pick? We must stop him. Is he the murderer? Did he kill the bandit on the car? Where did you capture him? This man is the murdered man's cook who disappeared on the night of the crime. We believe there were valuables left in the house and that their abstraction was the motive. The man had been seen in the vicinity of the house once before. The second time, <laughs> subdue him, Higgins, blank him. <laughs> The second time we left an ambuscade for him, and we shall be applying for remand when the prisoner is brought before the magistrates. That will be all for now, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Was it on the where did, where did you capture him? Bates, I am not convinced that you are on the right line. Mr. Holmes doesn't want you to commit yourself too far unless you're sure. Oh, you're very kind, gentlemen. But, uh, <clears throat> We did agree to work on our own lines, didn't we? <laughs> and that's what I'm doing. You're welcome always to uh, my news. This fellow is as strong as a cart horse and <laughs> fierce as the devil. He nearly bit off Constable Downing's thumb before they managed to master him. He speaks hardly any English, and we can get nothing out of him but grunts. <laughs> and you think? But you have evidence that he murdered his late master. I didn't say so, Mr. Holmes. I didn't say so. We all have our own little ways. You will go yours, and I will go mine. That was the agreement. <laughs> so be. I think Baines is riding for a fall. I'd have to agree with you there. You appreciate our difficulty, Watson. There's nothing upon which we can apply for a warrant. And with our worthy inspector making his arrest, our theory would seem fantastic if laid before the magistrate. And yet you think the lady is in danger of her life? Yes, I'm sure of it, Watson. Therefore, we must take the law into our own hands. Top left bay. Uh -huh. We could reach it from that outhouse.
Give me the very evidence I wanted. We were both on the same scent from the start. <laughs> well, you went after Henderson too. Why so well? You first, and then uh, Dr. Watson here came crawling through the undergrowth at High Gable. Uh, I was up a tree observing you both. Uh, it was just a question of who got the evidence first. <laughs> Why did you arrest the mulatto? Well, I was sure that Henderson, as he calls himself, felt he was suspected. And he would make no move so long as he thought he was in danger. So I arrested the wrong man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you will rise high in your profession, Inspector. Oh. You have instinct and intuition. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. But we can't arrest without Miss Burnett's evidence, can we? I should be able to give <laughs> you that in a moment, but... Tell me, who is this man, Henderson? He's Don Murillo, known as the Tiger of San Pedro. One of the most dangerous men out of Central America. Oh, indeed. A most lewd and bloodthirsty tyrant. Who imposed his odious vices upon a cowering people for almost 12 years. Was it the San Pedro colors, green and white, that first put you onto it? That of my visit to London to the Spanish Embassy in the Foreign Office. Now, please, this is your case, Inspector. Oh. Five years ago, there was a rising against the tyrant. But it was an empty palace they stormed. Don Murillo, his secretary, two children, and all the wealth had escaped by ship. And from that moment, they disappeared from the face of the earth. Its identity has been a subject of constant Comment in the European press. We discovered him a year ago. Miss Burnett. How came you into this matter, Miss Burnett? An English lady in such a murderous affair. Because there is no other way in the world by which justice can be gained. What does the law of England care about the rivers of blood shed so many years ago in San Pedro? or well, the shipload of treasure that this man has stolen from us. To you, they're like crimes committed in some other planet. We know. My real name is Signora Victor Durando. My husband was the minister of San Pedro in London. He met and married me there. A nobler man never lived upon the earth. Unhappily, Murillo heard of his excellence and recalled him on some pretext and shot him by a stroke of, of premonition. My husband had refused to take me with him. Then came the downfall of the monster. He escaped, as you have described, but the many whose lives he had ruined, whose loved ones had suffered torture and death at his hands, would not let the matter rest. We banded ourselves into a society which would never be dissolved until the work was done. It was my part to attach myself to his household and keep the others in touch with his movements. I secured the position as governess. De Harlas. He little knew that the woman who faced him at every meal was the woman whose husband he had hurried to eternity. I smiled on him, did my duty to his children, and bided my time. An 
an attempt was made in Paris and failed. We zigzagged here and there swiftly over Europe to throw off our pursuers, and finally we returned to High Gable. Garcia had been waiting there for nearly a year with two trusty companions, all fired with the same reasons of revenge. Who was Garcia? The son of Fernando Garcia. One of the former highest dignitaries of San Pedro, who was murdered like your husband. This note you sent, you say it was intercepted? During the day, Murillo took every precaution and never went out save with his satellite, Lucas. Even at night, the man was forever on the alert and continually changed his room. We had arranged that I would send Garcia final instructions. The doors would be open and the signal of a green or white light in a window which faced the drive was to give notice if all was safe or if the attempt had better be postponed. To whom are you writing this letter? <laughs> which describes, it would seem, the room in which I intend to sleep tonight. <laughs> Who is your confederate? <laughs> Who is your confederate? <laughs> what is your real name, Miss Burnett? <laughs> My name is Durando. <laughs> Durando's widow. Once my dearest friend. You murdered him! He betrayed me. And so did your husband. <laughs> and now they send the wives and sons. Will you never learn? <laughs> I am indestructible. <laughs> At first, they were of a mind to let him enter the house and kill him as a detected burglar. But they feared the inquiry might publicly expose them. Para todos, todos para uno.
justice will come. That is as certain as the rise of tomorrow's sun. I have no doubt that my life, too, hung in the balance. For most of the time, I was confined to my room, terrorized by the most horrible threats to break my spirit. Occasionally, I was allowed out, but only when they had first drugged my food. And it was in this state that you found me at the station. And thanks to this good man, I am beyond their power forever. Well, Inspector, our police work is done, but our legal work begins. Exactly, Mr. Holmes, yes. Garcia's death in the hands of a plausible lawyer could look like an act of self-defense. Well, I think better the law than that. Self-defense is one thing, but to entice a man in cold blood with the object of murdering him is another. Whatever danger you fear from him, I think we shall see justice done at the next Guildford Assizes. Of course, you have released the mulatto. Yes, sir. He's a free man again. And your man is with the fugitives on the train? Yes, sir. Yes, and I've wired Scotland Yard to have uh, their men at Waterloo Station to receive them. Yes. You know, I really must congratulate you, Inspector. Your powers, if I may say so, without offence, are superior to your opportunities. You're right, Mr. Holmes. In the provinces, we stagnate. A case like this gives a man a chance. 